It's got to be continuously looked at. Otherwise, things are going to be very, very different. Changing role of the CFO. I mean, you know, we hired, in my last 10 years, we, we hired 30 CAs, 15 left. But the 15 who left worked with us for two years and added value. There used to be a time I used to take it as a personal sort of insult. Yeah, I used to get very emotional about this whenever a guy left the firm. Then there was a gentleman from your community called Sana Qureshi Saab, who happened to be the vice chairman of ICN. And, and you know, I was talking to him one day. I said, this is really bad. We invest so much on these kids. You know, we, we send them abroad in the two years. I cultivate them. He says, what's your percentage? I said, 50. He goes, you've done better than ICI. We were 25. You know, that encouraged me. And then he said, just go to and speak to those 15 guys who left you. Where are they? Did they leave you for another firm in Pakistan or did they leave you because of family reasons? I was very happy I did that analysis. 13 of the 15 left for abroad. And out of the 13, four came back. So my view was hire the best, even if they come for two years. A set doesn't do it. Most of our entrepreneur businessmen don't do it. But a good guy adds value for two years, as long as he is honest, has integrity. He adds value. So these 15 guys who came and few came back, they added value. The guys we still have with us, the 15, we keep telling them, look, you're not here for finance. You're not here for costing. You're not here for auditing. You need to go through this department. If you want to get to the CFO level, you need to have rotated through three departments. And I'm very happy to convey, we have now chartered accountants in the business development role, supply chain role, and one of them put up his hand to move into marketing. Chartered accountants with personalities are brilliant people. Chartered accountants with personality are brilliant people. It's important. You guys should be very proud of your profession, but I think your institutes need to work on this interpersonal stuff. And you need to cultivate them that if they come into firms to get up to the top, why just the CFO level? They'll wiggle around or stick there. Your genetics will come in. You will suddenly become a SAIT as a CA. You would not want to leave that position. You won't cultivate people below you. The best way to do it is create a chart that gets you to swing around a company. And I think that's very important. I think the role that we have defined over a period of time is this. And I think that's where I'd like to sit. I think whether you're a CFO or a CEO in the making, unless you have these three things measured, as part of your annual appraisal, as part of your annual objective setting, key result areas, you're not going to be able to cultivate people who become leaders. Okay, number one is performance anybody, everybody must give. Whether you're a guy who's a salesman, whether you're a guy who works in a uh, um, finance department, logistics department, engineering department, everybody has got to perform. That's number one. Now, for a finance guy, it can be these figures, right? They can be financial figures that, okay, you know, these are the things you need to deliver on, et cetera, et cetera. Now, but generally, as a CEO, these are the kinds of things I'm also benchmarked by. What have been my sales? What's been the return on equity? You know, the stock market judges you by that. Your joint venture partner judges you by that. Your founder judges you by that. But beyond that, it's important to get out of the performance mode. You've got to deliver on performance. You've got to perfect it in a manner that is deliverable. That's part of your job. You know day in, day out, you need to hit these numbers. But then you're going to be a very unicentered person, single-minded person, if you don't build the organization. And I see people in this room who I admire in their companies, they have built organizations. Remarkable stories. From scratch, 10, 12 years ago, nothing. Now, huge financial institution. 
they've fo focused on, fa on organization building. I think that's what we focus on. And that's where you guys need to focus on. And the CFO needs to be an organization builder. What does he need to know? He needs to know what is the culture of that organization. When we made a mistake in buying a company that we subsequently sold, the thing we got wrong was organization building. We got the people with the wrong culture to join us who were not on the same wavelength as us. Now, best way is you try to deculturalize them. If it doesn't happen, then it's not worth your time. Then as a business, when you've got to take the hard decision. It's just like a trade in the stock market. People don't like to take the loss. But sometimes you've got to take the loss, as you know. Recruitment, training, these are the things that are critical for an organization builder. You've got to benchmark that guy. Is he CFO material? Is he CEO material? Has he done these things? We, had a, we have a CFO right now. When I joined 12 years ago, he uh, was very reluctant to hire chartered accountants. He was very reluctant. And I told him, listen, man, if you don't hire good people, then we're going to have trouble here. Because it's not just below you that we're going to hire people. We're going to hire people below every single GM in this company. My biggest pride is that in the last 12 years, we hired 500 young people straight out of college as, as management trainees. And we still have 250 with us. They are now our backbone. Imagine we hired them 10, 12, 9 years ago. They are the guys going to each and every one of our group companies now in their early 30s, late 30s as general managers. Organization building. If you don't do it, you're going to get stuck. And the last part, and I think this is the most difficult jump that needs to be made, it is the strategist. Strategist, strategist, strategist. With the environment Dr. Saab has just described you, with the environment that Yakub and I face every day. I'll tell you, there are a lot of people here who are turning to their CFOs, they're turning to each other, they're turning to their top leadership on strategy. What should our company strategy be? What should our financial strategy be? What should our cost down strategy be? That's different from financial. It's an inflationary market environment, so it's got to be cost down. What's our new product strategy? Because we know margins might get squeezed in some. And I feel very, very proud that one put the bet on your fraternity 10, 12 years ago, and your fraternity has not let us down. The only thing is, I think the lessons that we have learned and we continue to learn require us to continue to, you know, just tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. It's a tough environment. It's going to be an uncertain environment. But one thing is for sure, we can be Indonesia in 15 years. If we couldn't, I wouldn't be in this country. I really believe the entrepreneurs of this country continue to be in this country because they believe and there are some great entrepreneurs. Emma Dow did what nobody else did. Mia Mansha has done what nobody else could have imagined. Sheikh Mukhtar has done what is unbelievable. Tabbas are doing great stuff. Every day I go out, I get inspired. You ask them, what are you doing? Africa me plant lagare. What are you doing? Either expansion karna chate, but policy thodi si thik ho jai. I think that belief is critical. And we should salute our entrepreneurs, we should salute your fraternity, and I think there's a great combination here in the making, and hence it's a pleasure being here. I hope it, uh, it was useful. Thank you.